Hi everyone! Welcome to Artsonia's After School Art Club. Today we have a fun art project from Mrs. Costell, an art teacher from Illinois. Hope you enjoy the video and don't forget to have your artwork uploaded to your Artsonia gallery. Hi, my name is Mrs. Costell. I am the art teacher at Elm School in Burr Ridge and Holy Trinity School in Westmont, Illinois. I also run the blog and website No Corner Sons. I have been an art teacher for a very long time and I have taught lots and lots and lots of students and today I am very excited to teach you. We are going to learn all about cool colors and we are going to use our watercolor paints to paint this beautiful peacock picture. What I need you to do is find a nice large area where you can do this project and you won't get in trouble if you accidentally spill your paints. Let's get started. You will need two pieces of paper, a pencil, four crayons, green, blue, purple, and black. You can use more if you have them. A set of watercolor paints, a cup for water, a brush, glue, and scissors. Let's look at the color wheel real quick. If I divide the color wheel in half diagonally, one side is cool colors and the other side is warm. This doesn't mean that when I touch these colors, they actually feel cold. Yikes! It means that these colors generally make you think of cooler and calmer things or feel sad. Same is true with the warm colors. Yellow, orange, and red often make us think of the sun or fire, or emotions that are more energetic like happy or excited. Peacocks are beautiful, cool colors in real life, so we will use their beautiful feathers and patterns to help us remember what the cool colors are. Turn one of your papers portrait style and write your name on the back. On the front, very lightly, with your pencil, start to draw a bunch of ovals. These should be about the size of your fist. Mine sort of tilt towards the center where our peacock's body will eventually be. It's okay if they are a little wonky. It's okay if some are bigger than others too. Try to fill the whole page. Fill in some of the remaining white space with smaller ovals. These will probably be misshapen too. It's okay. Okay. Now, get ready to have your hand hurt. You are going to press really hard and trace over all those pencil lines with your green crayon. Press hard. Grab your purple. Draw a purple oval or circle inside the green one. It should be smaller than the green one and be connected to the bottom. Again, press hard. If they are a little misshapen or different sizes, that is okay. Oh man, I always break crayons when I am doing this. But hey, broken crayons still work. You guessed it, when you are done with the purple, use the blue crayon to make an even smaller oval or circle inside the purple. Press hard. If you are doing this correctly, you should be feeling like your hand is about to fall off. So, it does start to look a little creepy, like a bunch of eyes staring at you, or a group of Mike Wazowski's, you know, like from Monsters Inc., but just keep going. I still have some space showing between my ovals. These are eventually going to look more like my peacock tail feathers, so I'm going to add a few curly Q lines along the edges of the green circles to show some stray feathery edges. Oh man, another one? Yikes. Uh, yeah, press hard on these two, but just be careful not to keep breaking crayons. Anyway, sort of tilt them towards the center as well, and I also used my black crayon just for a little bit of emphasis. What is with all the pressing hard? Crayons are basically made out of wax. Wax and water do not mix. When you try to paint over wax, you get what is called a resist. All these super hard crayon lines are creating barriers for your paint, so our colors don't run and mix all together. But we are still going to be real careful when we paint. I'm going to start by adding a lot of water to my green watercolor. That's why it's called watercolor. I like to make a little puddle on top and just use the paint from there. That way I know that I am going to get a nice light color. I'm going to paint all my green shapes nice and lightly. I'm 
going to skip the purple for now and make a puddle of water on my blue and paint my blue shapes second. Now this is going to seem a little weird too, but I'm going to put this paper off to the side a sec while I work on my second piece of paper. This will give those two colors a chance to dry just a bit while I work on my peacock's body. Fold your second paper in half, portrait style, and go ahead and cut it in half on that fold line. We are only going to use half. Keep it turned portrait style, very lightly with your pencil, about a little lower than halfway up, draw a rainbow. Floating above that rainbow is going to be a little circle. That is the peacock's head. Go ahead and give him a big old triangle beak. Now, he needs a neck. This part is kind of fun. Connect the floating head with his shoulders with some nice wide lines. You actually are going to make the neck on the side of the circle and kind of go towards the side of the rainbow. Don't make it under the circle or it'll look like he's got a really skinny neck. Make sure you erase the bottom of the circle and the top of the rainbow. Shake out your hand, crack your knuckles, and get your black crayon. Trace your peacock's body with black and press really hard. And give that peacock a little eye too. Since you already have a nice puddle of blue happening on your watercolor paint, paint your peacock's body blue. If you want to get fancy and mix green and blue so it looks more turquoise, go ahead and do it. I would leave the beak white for now and paint that a different color later. Just be careful. Moving back to my feather filled page, I'd like to create some contrast in the background of my picture. Contrast is a principle of design where an artist uses an element in an opposite way than they already have. I'm going to create contrast by painting my background with a warm color since the rest of my picture is cool colors. I've decided to use yellow, but you can use whatever color you would like. I've also taken this opportunity to color my peacock's beak. I am ready to paint the purple ovals now. I saved this till the end because the purple watercolor paint can get really dark. I wanted to make sure I didn't get my water really dirty before I was finished painting everything else. Voila! All right, so you're done painting, but you might want to go get a snack or something while you wait for the paint to dry on your peacock's body parts. Nothing ruins a beautiful piece of artwork faster than trying to cut a soggy piece of paper or picking up dripping wet paintings. But don't get too distracted and leave all your art supplies out. That makes parents upset, even parents who are art teachers. Through the magic of television, I have a dry one right here. Once your peacock's body is dry, cut him out and glue him to the very bottom of your feather painting. Doesn't that look majestic? Okay, if you are feeling super fancy, there are a lot of things you can do to make this peacock all your own. Mixing colors is just the beginning. You can add shadows and sequins, switch up your color scheme, use foamies, pom-poms, stickers, or glitter glue. There are so many possibilities. Good luck. Did you have fun? I hope I get a chance to see your project. Thanks for painting with me today.